When uh, I remember when our uncle Willie, he was a pastor for many years. Um, he pastored in Boston for oh, 20 some plus years, in northern Minnesota. But he started the church in Aiken, where I grew up, in the church that he, he started. Um, my mother and um, many of her siblings were, were touched and saved out of result of that church plant. And uh, William was uh, a great man of God, a great man of prayer. But I remember him uh, at the house singing that song. I was only just out of high school. And so that, that was influential. He had the mandolin out. He was strumming away and, and singing that. Isn't it good to bring music into our homes? Bring music into your heart. I think it's, 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 it's key to keeping up, keeping the spiritual man strong, being quick to praise him, being thankful, being in a place of worship and adoration. And so as we're going through Colossians, we're going to be reminded that we're in the third chapter. Uh, we just need to review a couple of things. Uh, Paul was talking about the struggle in chapter 2, about how it was such a struggle, but it was not easy for, for Paul to get many get to where he wanted to go. And uh, oftentimes he was... Uh, it was, uh, he would say that the enemy thwarted him, thwarted. I don't use the word thwart, but I like to take that word, and thwart means to mess with. And I like to pray, oh God, thwart, thwart, thwart Satan's plans. So turn it around. So rather than Satan messing with you and I, God is messing with Satan. Amen? And we are, we are not to, uh, we are, he is stronger. Greater is he that is in you. So why should we, the Bible really makes it clear that we don't have to walk in fear. Don't be, many times when Jesus came to talk to his disciples, he said, don't be afraid. Fear not. You're not. And Paul had many, uh, many things he could have just said. It's no use. It's too hard. <laughs> it can't be done. Uh, he could have pulled a Jonah, you know. He said, no way am I going to talk to those people. But uh, I wouldn't have to learn how Jonah learned the hard way to get, get into obedience with God. You know the story being spewed up, being chewed up, being swallowed by a fish. Sitting and thinking about that in the belly of a fish kind of changed Jonah's mind after a couple days. Now, Paul was in prison. Much of the word that we have today is a result of the time that Paul had to write back to the churches that he was influential in starting and, and ministering to or encouraging. It was often on Paul's heart not, not just beside all the trials and, and, the, and the hurdles that he had to get over, but he was concerned about the people, that their faith would remain in the Lord. And so, you know, when we sang that little song, the blessing, may his be a blessing be upon our children and their children and their children. You are going to make a difference when you pray for your children and you pray for the grandchildren. And if you have great-grandchildren, it keeps going. The prayers of the people of God will make a difference. Carrie alluded to that. Some of our days in Palisade, we did feel the prayers of the saints that went before us. They, and Jesus said once, some have entered in upon the harvest. Of the, the, you know, some have worked, but others have entered in upon it. In other words, it's, some have done all the groundwork, but others came along and, and took the harvest, made it work, made it happen. Never give up when your prayers are maybe not answered just like that, because God is, is still working, and I believe with all my heart today that God is for your family. God is for the wayward one. God is for those who are 
maybe making some poor choices, so to speak. God is trying to get a hold of them as you pray. And God loves them more than you could ever imagine. And so all these things can become discouraging. And I talked to a man who called me this week, someone that's not in this community, lives in the city, did some work for him, and he calls me, and he, you know, he became a believer some years ago. And he said, Pastor, but I get discouraged because my wife just doesn't want to make that step, just doesn't want to take that step to, to, to come to the Lord. You know, she's a good wife, et cetera, et cetera, but it would be so much better if she would come. And Pastor, do you have anything, the word, any scripture that comes to mind? And, you know, of course, I was uh, grabbing this and that. And, but really what he really needed at the moment was someone to listen to him and someone that would, could say, you know what, just be encouraged the Lord is, loves your wife no matter, no matter what uh, situation the Lord is able. And don't give up because it will pay off. It will pay off. And so whatever it takes, Lord, to bring in people, we pray that we must sometimes be ready to, to go through things or with our family. So the Lord is good. He is on the throne. He has not forgotten you. Some of the problems in our world, some of the minds that are in our, our community, some of the minds set that is in our world, as we don't need Christ. There's this spirit of Antichrist. As we know, the scripture teaches about that, that someday there will be an Antichrist that will rise up and deceive many. But it also says we are already now in the world. There's a spirit of Antichrist. There's a system that is happening, a spirit of Antichrist. That's why, why does so, so many uh, leaders sometimes get so blown out of proportion that someone's going to pray in Jesus' name. This is a spirit of Antichrist. And we just need to stand strong, not be foolish about it, not to be, you know, overbearing about it, but just to live life in the fullness of the spirit of God. There's only one real way to have a fulfilled life is to have Jesus in our heart and know that we're on our way to heaven. The only greatest life on this earth that ever could be lived is the life that Jesus has for you. He said, I come that you might have life and life more abundant. Well, he didn't mean necessarily that we were going to have a lot of stuff, but we were going to have the inner man was going to be so filled up that we just really feel the riches of his presence every day. There's nothing that can take that place. So as we start to refer to the scriptures in chapter 3, by this time Paul is, is turning his eyes to Jesus. He had talked about, watch out for people who come with deception, people who have world-minded people, people who have philosophers and all kinds of things. And it's against Christ. He warned against them. If you continue into things that I've, I have commandments in verse 22, previous to chapter uh, 3, which all refer to things destined to perish, which is using all the things that the world has to offer, going to perish, all the things that, that, that we try to, to uh, hold on to. It's not going to be forever. So I'm thankful that God has made known to us, in part, our future. And so we walk by faith. Verse 1, chapter 3, here we go. If then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. And we'll just take a moment to talk about these verses. Verse 1, if then you have been raised up with Christ. What does it mean to be, have been raised up with Christ? Well, if you understand Scripture, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us before we came to Christ, chapter 2 of Ephesians talks about how we were dead. Verse 1, 
Ephesians 2, 1. You were dead, and you didn't even know it. You were dead in your sins and trespasses, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world. Now I'm skipping down. Verse 4, but God. I want, to, I want you to get that in your, your mind or heart today. You have a situation right now you're going through. It's tough, it's difficult, it's impossible, so to speak. But God. James said it. No man can tame the tongue, but God. I mentioned some book that I started reading several months ago about the logging you know, era in Minnesota and how God raised up evangelists, preachers that went in, they went in, they carried their stuff, they carried their tools, they worked maybe alongside the loggers, but they brought the song books, they brought and they and they sang a cappella. Most of the time they didn't have instruments because it was too awkward to bring in. You didn't carry an organ on your back through the woods 20 miles. <laughs> you know, it wasn't practical. But the Spirit of God would come down in the logging came. But God, take cussing, swearing. As it said, it is it recorded that the, the horses didn't know how to respond after the, the men got saved because they were used to cuss words. How's that for revival? Ha! How's that for change of heart? They were, they were dead in their sins and trespasses, not caring about the world, uncaring, well, no, not uncaring about God, only caring for themselves and now, the now thing. Only what's in it for me. And there's no limit to what the flesh will do Outside of the God of the Holy Spirit to help us. So, back to the, uh, Colossians 3, 1. You've been raised up. You see, water baptism is symbolic of the death through the cross. You're identifying his death and resurrection out of the water, we're resurrected to new life. And so water baptism was a command that the Lord gave to believe and be baptized. And so it's a reference to the former life. And I want you to understand anyone can get saved at any age. That's good news. Although it may be harder when people have become calloused, but God. And if it takes, and if God is gracious to give them the final chance, if, if God gives them the final chance at their last breath, there's still a potential that someone could get saved in their last breath because God is merciful and doesn't want anyone to perish. And so we keep seeking the things that are above. Why should we seek the things that are above? Because that is our hope. That is our real home that is coming. That is eternal life that awaits us. Set your mind on the things above, on the, not on the things of the earth. Oh, my. Remember Mary and Martha story? Remember how Martha was trying to fix the meal and tidy up and prepare. Jesus was in the house, and Mary just sat there listening to the words of Jesus. Now, I'm all, I don't want us to get confused. We need worker bees. We need people that are working, doing the things. But it was time, this opportunity, Mary took advantage of the fact that Jesus was in her house 
And she was listening, sitting at his feet, and Jesus told Mary, or told Martha, you're distracted. You're, you're, you're distracted. And this is a challenge to you and I right now in our world. Keep your eyes on Jesus. What does the devil want you to do? He wants you to be distracted so that you stop seeking the Lord, so that you back off a little bit on your prayer life, so that you kind of become casual, so to speak, come kind of just complacent in the Word. But keep seeking. God is looking for a heart in whom he can fill. God will never force himself on anyone. He's looking for the hungry, seeking people, those that are looking for him, those whose minds are made up. And so we read other places like Romans 12. Speaks about how we are not to be conformed to this world. Oh my goodness. Have you seen any conformity lately in our world? God help us to be strong, to keep his truth in our heart. Don't be conformed, Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed to this world. The word transform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable. If it's on your mind, it's more likely to happen. How many have projects? Yeah? How many have goals, projects, things you want to get done before the winter comes? Yes? If you forget about it, and it's not on your mind, what will happen is the snowflakes will start to come, and you'll go, "Uh uh-oh, I forgot about that. And then you'll find yourself cutting down wood in the middle of the winter or sometime that's tougher, for example. But as the Bible teaches to prepare, for one day the Lord is going to come, and he spoke about, often in parables, that he would find his servant being faithful. Or the five foolish and the five wise. The five wise took enough oil to carry them through so that when the bridegroom came, they were ready. They had enough oil. And they were welcomed in. And so our challenge is this, to be renewed in our mind. Keep our mind upon you, Jesus. Sometimes it's helpful to have a song. Just sing it out or turn it on or take the word of God and write it out on your a, a card and put it on the refrigerator, put it on your mirror. Whatever works for you. Or just read it, simply reading, taking time. That's all works to keep your mind upon the Lord. Our mind is a powerful thing, isn't it? And sometimes we need to be reminded, if you're like me, I find it when I walk around the, the yard, if, I, if I've uh, wanted, I forgot what I, by the time I get there, I forgot what I went for. What is that all about? Is that overloaded? Things, too many things in your mind, probably a part of that. Hopefully that's all it is. But hey, can you relate to that? Your mind is a powerful thing. And some of us are good at remembering names, and other of us are okay. You know? It's something we have to work at. But our mind is, sometimes our minds are made up. And one of the Old Testament persons thought he wanted to go in a direction, but his donkey reared up, and so and did weird stuff, and backed away, and yet again, well, who was the guy? Balaam, there you go. 
Balaam. Well, he cursed. He hit the donkey. What do you, what would you have done if you had been in his shoes? He pressed the donkey, pressed him against the wall. His foot was aching. And the donkey turned around and said, well, why are you beating me? God opened the mouth of the donkey. Why are you eating me? Haven't I been your faithful servant? Can't you see the angel with the sword? Sometimes we got to back up and not force things to happen in this life. And give it time. Give God's timing on it. Get God's blessings. Make sure we got the green light. Make sure we're going in the right direction. But we'll only know that if we've spent the time to hear, to encourage, oh my goodness, how important our quiet time. I, I have to relish the quiet time. I look forward to the quiet time. It, it can be when you're driving to work. It could be when you're first, maybe some of you get up in the middle of the night. Whatever it may be, but give ear to the Lord. Set your mind on things. Think about God in heaven right now. Think about what he may be doing, what is happening. Think about the throne. Read Revelation describing the, those around the throne room. Let's think about how those who went on before us, Hebrews chapter 12 and 11th chapter of the Hall of Faith. And Hebrews chapter 12 says, Fix your eyes on Jesus. Running this race below requires a disciplined mindset. If we don't know where we want to go, we're going to be wandering like the people of Israel, wandering in the desert. If we don't want God's blessing, we'll just wander in circles and keep going back and forth, doing the same thing over and over. But the change of change, we have been raised up. This is what's happening. What, what's really the message here? is that we were once dead, but now we are alive. We were once unconcerned about the things of God, but somehow something, the Lord came to us and opened our eyes. We were, that salvation, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. I cannot do any of that. The God, the Holy Spirit saves. God, the Holy Spirit brings to life that which is dead. I marvel over how God has created so many things. You can cut a tree down, a stump, a stump, like an oak or a maple. Come back in a couple of years and there's all these sprouts coming out of it. God is a God of renewal. Right now our world is such a mess. If we don't get the word of God going in our hearts and lives, we're going to find ourselves feeling drugged down and drugged into it. We're going to find ourselves filled with anxiety and things that we can't handle. And so the word of God is here to help us. For our day that we live, Jesus has, has brought us, number one, he's, we are raised up with him, number two, we're going to be revealed with him. Number three, we're going to be renewed by him. And as we talk a little more about the, the, the revelation with him, that it's hard for us to understand what our heavenly body is going to be like. I do believe that we're going to recognize each other. I do believe that. But the good news is we're never going to have to worry about getting sick or feeling aches and pains or feeling bothered or feeling worried or feeling stressed. We're never going to have to worry about the, the, the torments sometimes that our body gives to us when we, we reach certain ages and certain things happen in our life. At 1 John 3, 2 and 3 is a promise for you and I who believe, beloved, now we are children of God. It has not appeared as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appeared, we shall be like him. We shall be like him because we shall see him just as he is. 
We shall be like, we're not going to be God. We're going to be like him. We're going to have a heavenly body. Paul talked about it in one of his letters. I think it was Corinth that we have an earthly body, but there's a heavenly body. And in order to be able to be in heaven, we need the heavenly body. I cannot even stand in the presence, the fullness of his presence right now. I would, I would be dead. But he's, of his grace and mercy, we're going to be changed. And so the good news is right now, our body is like an earthly tent, right? Temporary. So life in as a whole is temporary. But why do we, well, why do I sometimes get so caught up in the temporary? Why do I have to battle? Because it's, it, it is a battle. All the stuff that I work and see is going to be for nothing except if I've done it unto the Lord. You can be a farmer, you can be a plumber, you can be a teacher, you can be whatever trade, whatever field. Colossians says this. Further over, and I'm skipping just a little over verse 23. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do your work heartily. As for the Lord, rather than for men. Right? As for the Lord, it will, it will burn you out. It will lose its, for lack of better term, luster. It will lose its newness, except the Lord keeps renewing our minds, keeps replenishing our spirit, so that we're able to keep going. Every day that he gives to us, we have another day to be a reflection of God the Holy Spirit in you and I. And so when you go to your workplace, or where to, whatever it may be, whatever season you're if you go to the marketplace, you have opportunity to serve. It is Christ. You may be giving a smile to someone who is really struggling with life. And if we've only take the time, sometimes just to take an extra second or two and listen or ask the question, how are you doing? And be ready to listen. Oh, how our culture has developed us. How are you? Good. How are you? Right? We, we do that a lot. It's courteous. It's good. I love it. But the next thing, if you may have time or feel prompt, you say, well, how are you really doing? I mean, it depends on where you're at with the relationship. If you know the person really well, and they say, well, good, but you kind of feel they're not doing so good. You're not really doing that good. And they go, yeah. See? You may be their encouragement that they needed in their life. There's so many people are being, they're being overwhelmed by life. We're overwhelmed. We're, all, we're just, we've become very fast paced, very fast paced. And our minds sometimes can't keep up with the changes. We can't keep up with all the things that are hitting us. So I need someone who is Jesus Christ to renew my mind. 
He is fresh, always. Verses are new every morning. Galatians chapter 6 describes a list of things that the flesh likes to do. The flesh likes to do every immoral thing, every sensual thing, every, everything that the world offers. And in the same paragraphs, in the same setting, Paul is writing to the church of Galatians, you don't have to do this. You don't have to bow down to your flesh. If you walk by the Spirit, the Spirit of God can help you have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You can have love, joy, peace, which ties right directly with the Colossians further down in this chapter 3, and we're going to finish with this few verses here. And so those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, Humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ, here it is, here's the key to keeping your mind on the Lord. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another with psalms and hymns, spiritual songs. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Make up a song. When you're alone, you can make a song up to the Lord. You do that? Oh, you're missing out if you don't do that. Because the Lord sees your heart. The Lord loves your heart when you sing to him. Because you're singing. Even Paul said, I sing in the spirit. In his tongues. His spiritual prayer life. It was building his spirit man up. He was worshiping God in the spirit. That's a whole different level of worship. Spirit-led worship. But it's there for us. It's there for us, there for the church. And whatever you do in word, in verse 17, to conclude, in word or deed. If you're out pulling weeds, Grumbling, I wish these weeds go away. That's one attitude. How will that work for us? That'll probably get you on the negative side of things. Pretty soon everything is bad. Yeah, it just goes on and on. But in other words, thank God I'm going to have the strength that he's given me to pull these weeds, be gone, and you start throwing weeds. And you start feeling good about it. Boy, the place looks better. Every spring, every spring, every spring or other spring, the mulch out here has to be refreshed on the ground because nature does its thing. And ever so often, if you're looking for something to do, there's some weeds that need to be pulled up. And so, Sometimes I'll take a few on my way in. Not always. But if they're really getting overgrown, something needs to happen. And so it is in our heart. Sometimes there's weeds. You know, I remember on the farm, there used to be this great big weed come up. It looked like a big old cockle burr. Terrible things you rubbed against. In the horse's gut, you know, on the tails. and It was just a mess. But those big old cockle burrs, they are rooted. And you have to pull hard. And sometimes we got to weed the garden, the garden of our hearts. And so, Lord, come on up, nature. We're going to sing one song, how we need the Lord. Sometimes we find that some weeds are really stubborn and hard to, hard to pull. We've neglected, we waited too long. 
And I believe that the Lord wants us to stay tender. Sometimes I have to stop myself and realize it's not always, always what I said, it's how I said it. I have to guard my heart. I have to take time to soak and let him touch me so I can be the person he's created me to be. You guys are good at listening. You've been, you come here Sunday after Sunday. It's not that the pastor is perfect. He's not. The pastor knows he needs Jesus. And the pastor will do his best if he points people to Jesus. Follow him. He makes things better. He is the eternal life and Savior. But right now, you guys are in this life. You maybe have things that are just kind of weighing on you. Kind of become, life can become overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. It's almost like you just need to take a time and stop. Just be still before him. In one of the second verse, where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Christ in me. used to look at how many things, how good I was in order to be holy. I used to think if I could just be better and be good, I'll be more holy. But that's a little, it's a little backwards because it really works this way. It's Christ in me making me holy. Therefore, I can be better. It's not about me. It's him. Amen. And so if you've You've had some challenges. Maybe you made some mistakes. Let his presence, let the blood of Jesus that he shed just to wash over you and give you a new start. You can have that. Lord, I come.